the book of Luke. Now Luke tells us a lot about Mary, the mother of Jesus. The other Gospels do not. Actually, the Gospel of John, if that's all we had was the Gospel of John, we would not know the name of the mother of Jesus. While John refers to her at critical times, the wedding feast of Cana, and say, at the foot of the cross, he refers to Mary as the mother of Jesus, but does not tell us his, her name. Matthew's gospel is largely given to telling us much about Joseph. And the gospel of Mark, which is the earliest, has some marginal references to the mother of God. So we rely largely on Luke. Luke has the annunciation, only Luke. And the visitation, which is the reference in the gospel today for us, is found only in Luke. Mary journeys from Nazareth, which is in the north, around Camarillo. And she journeys all the way down to this area, about 70 miles from Nazareth to a place called Ein Kerem, which is very close to Jerusalem. In the time of Mary and Elizabeth, it was separate from Jerusalem. Now it's part of the greater Jerusalem area. And there they have two wonderful churches dedicated, one to John the Baptist and the other to uh, this event of the visitation. And for those who are lovers of art, by the way, if you visit Ein Karim, Ein Karim means um, the spring of the vineyard. It's a very scenic place in the Judean hills. If you visit there and you're interested in art, you will want to go to uh, the hospital there, Hasada Hospital, and uh, in the synagogue they have 12 astounding, extraordinary stained glass windows done by Mark Chagall, the world-renowned Jewish artist. And people go there to see the Chagall windows. And that's Ein Kerem. That's where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. And that's the place that Mary journeyed in haste, it says, from all the way from Nazareth in the north. It says she stayed for three months. Now, in the Annunciation, it says Elizabeth is six months pregnant, and Mary stayed with her for three months, which presumes that she stayed for the birth of John the Baptist. And I'm looking at this gospel, I looked at it in every angle. I mean, I read commentaries on it and wondered what it meant, and I read some of the Greek reference. I read all that stuff. And there was one question that I couldn't find answered in any commentary, and that is, what did the two pregnant women talk about for three months? <laughs> I, I couldn't figure that out. So I decided I'd consult the feminine wisdom of the parish. I even asked a young woman in her parish who was expecting her baby, February. I said, what, what, what will women talk about for three months? And they're expecting their babies. And after she began explaining it to me, I said, it's okay. It's not homiletic material. <laughs> it probably, probably isn't the essential teaching of the gospel. So I kind of set it aside. But I learned something that was very good. <laughs> so let me look at this gospel. She traveled in haste it says, to greet Elizabeth. She had a mystical experience. And she traveled to share the mystical experience with somebody who would understand the moment of grace. So Jews or Elizabeth, who was also pregnant, in a kind of a mystical way, it was revealed to her. What's the teaching of this? Well, the teaching is in two stories. We remember stories. We carry stories with us. All life is full of stories. And this goes back some years ago. There was this fabulous young woman. She was 27 years old. And I knew her since she was a little girl. She lived down at the beach. And at 27, 
She's praying fiercely for the right man. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes fellows who are 27 are praying for the right woman. So she comes to see me and says, I'm meeting a lot of low life, all such a wacko guys. I'm trying to meet a nice Catholic man. And I said, now, Katie, I'm going to pray with you. I'll pray for you. And you'll pray, and we'll both pray. And we're praying away, and about 30, every 30 days, she comes back up and says, the prayer, it doesn't seem to be working. I'm not meeting this fellow. So I said, we'll keep praying. So after a few months of praying like this, she came up once, and I said, look, why don't we not look for a nice Catholic man? Why don't we look for a nice man? And we leave the Catholic thing out. We'll work that out later. So we began to pray for a nice Catholic man. So we're praying around for a while, and she didn't show up for a few months. And then she called me one day, and I said, oh my God, something extraordinary happened, a mystical experience for this woman. Because the, 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 the phone was on fire, and she said, I have to come to see you in haste, right, right, right away. Well, she came on up, and I took her out to lunch, and she met Bill, who was fantastic. No religion, total agnostic, but we'll work that out later. No, but he was a fabulous guy, and he loved her, and she just felt incredible. I mean, she was floating up on the clouds. And uh, I began to reflect on why was she so excited? Why was this so meaningful? Because she was in love? No, no. It was meaningful because she was chosen. We all need to be chosen sometime in life. We all need to be unique. And if somebody come to us and say, you are unique and I choose you. And now I feel chosen. I feel a meaning in my, in my life, a mission in my life. And Katie was excited, not because she was in love, but because somebody loved her and she was a chosen person. That's the first teaching of this event as I read it in the Gospels. That when you're chosen, you get new life. You get a new meaning to your life. You know, Plato in his symposium said, we are fired into life with a madness that comes from the gods that makes us believe that we are destined for a great love. Not many loves, but a great love. That's the chosen part of it. And if you feel blessed by God and you feel a certain meaningful mission in your life, you feel God's presence in your life, look, I feel I am exactly in my life where I think God means me to be. Once I decide I am where God means me to be, I can't complain anymore. Hey, why would I complain? God is blessing me. I am where God means me to be. And that's a chosen condition. And the first teaching is, if you are a chosen person, rejoice and be grateful because that is the special grace that will give meaning to your life. If you're out there praying for the perfect Catholic man, that's a different question. We'll have to keep praying then. But keep in mind the notion of being chosen. That's why Mary was so excited because the angel Gabriel came to her and said, Rejoice, you are highly favored. You are a blessed person. And Elizabeth, your kinswoman, is already expecting her baby, kind of miraculously. So she is so excited, she has to go in haste to share her excitement. The first teaching of this gospel. The second one comes from a story that I have used, I think, before, but it fits here, so I want to mention it. When I was a teenager, living in the UK and London, I had a mini car. You know those mini cars? We think they're new. They're not new. I had one of those 60 years ago. I had a mini Austin. It's a little car. It was fabulous. And it was a stick shift around London. It was fabulous, easy to park. It would zip around and all that. It was just great when you're young. 
Well, I was out driving with my mother one day. We didn't wear seatbelts in those days. And uh, I'm on my best behavior. My mother, who was a saint, was right there with me. I'm really devout. And uh, somebody cut me off. Some arrogant guy cut me off. Well, I knew that wasn't God's will, so I threw the car into second, and I went around, and I went around, and I went around, and I got ahead of him. I beat him. My mother was furious. Not because I threatened her life, which I did. She said, you're wrong. And I said, no, he's wrong. He cut me off. He's wrong. You know, she said, you're wrong. And then she said something that I never forgot. She said, you could have brought out the best in that other fellow, but you didn't. You brought out the worst in him. Any time you bring out the worst in another person, you're wrong. Doesn't matter how right you think you are. Any time you bring out the worst, you're wrong. Now, in all the years I've remembered that, God knows I have failed, I'm sure, more times than I have succeeded in bringing out the best in other persons. But it's a teaching. Mary is the Christ bearer. She carries within her the Savior of the world. And when she greets Elizabeth, she brings out the best in Elizabeth. The child in her womb leaps for joy in rejoicing that Mary came to visit her with good news that we are both chosen people, we are blessed. She brings out the best in Elizabeth. And whatever they talked about for the next three months, I'm sure it was to celebrate God's presence in their lives, to bring out the best in one another. So take the teaching of the gospel, especially at this time of the year. Rejoice and be grateful if you have been chosen in life, if you've been blessed in your life, walk in gratitude, praising God. And secondly, in all our gatherings during these holy days, let the grace of God empower you to bring out the best, the best in the other person. Amen.